Hey guys, it's Brent with Likens Motorsports. Almost forgot who I was. This is a World Products 8200 deck Ford small block Ford block. This is going to be the foundation of our tunnel port uh, race engine build. So this will be a road race engine. Um, featuring the tunnel port race heads and a uh, 2x4 tunnel port small block forward intake so the block was machined and then um had to go back and do some touch up because our uh, these are dlc coated tool steel solid flat tappet lifters they were about a half thou too big on the od so we had to go back and rehone all the lifter bores but uh, now we're back in action. And um, last time I messed with this, uh, we checked some, we did all the rod bearing clearance checks. We did some mains and found out that the mains were on the tight side. So um, I ordered some X bearings and what I expect to happen is uh, we're gonna mix and match a standard and an X and see if we can dial in our main bearing clearances. So let me flip this thing over. Well, let me start here. Give you guys a tour of the block. They're extremely beefy. Um, they got lots of material everywhere for strength. So we did a nice uh, blend of the, the cylinder skirts here to take off all those sharp edges. If, you're, if you've ever taken an engine apart, and you're wondering why you're getting lots of scuffs here and on your uh, on your piston skirts. This is why usually um, there's a sharp edge right here, and that sharp edge will catch the aluminum on the skirt of the piston and roll it up and transfers metal, and then you're uh, it's all downhill from there. So this is a pretty hot item on your block prep list deburr the bottoms of those cylinder skirts or yeah the bottoms of the cylinders we've already got our coated uh durban cam bearings knocked in very beefy on the mains so dowled inner bolts splayed outer bolts even the front cap and the rear cap are four bolt so this thing would take whatever horsepower you wanted to throw at it i'm sure this will be a dry sump engine, so I don't have the nipple in here yet. Instead, we'll use um, this Peterson dry sump. Since it's a dry sump engine, we'll use this adapter that I've got on old Triple J. And we'll get that in here. Got our uh, brass freeze plugs knocked in. All of the letters are facing the correct way. That's just me being anal. It doesn't have to be that way. But um, if you're gonna knock them in, you might as well knock them in all together, right? Make it look good. So let me get this rolled over. I'll show you the top end. So lots of extra feeds for um, dry sump applications. You can feed uh, to the port here in the back, or you can feed and through this port. So there's several ways of going about it. Um, I tapped these holes, I actually drilled and tapped them. And depending on where the head is in relation to this fitting right here, uh, will be, that'll determine my plan of action for either plugging these or putting a little short standoff, standpipe in there or not. So waiting to get the heads back and Waiting to get the heads back is waiting on some custom bronze valve guides that are still not completed. So be waiting on those. But if these real beefy, has got the block has these extra bolt holes at the top and the bottom. And there's only a few small block Ford heads that would actually take advantage of that. Uh, most just use the standard two, four, six, eight, ten 10 bolts per side. There's the business end.
the World Block uses some small block Chevrolet lifter bore restrictors. So those have um, they're it's like a I should have taken taken a picture. Actually, I did take a picture. I'll show you here in a second. Um, but these have a way of restricting the oil coming from. So the oil comes from the uh, front of the block priority main. So it feeds the mains and the rods cam, and it comes up through the back, comes up in this passage, and then goes to each of your lifter galleries. And this will restrict the oil to the lifter galleries. So you don't, with a solid cam, you don't need um, all that oil going to it. All right, so I'm gonna roll it back over and um, we're going to get back to checking our main bearing clearances with our new bearings. So I'm gonna get my mic out and my bore gauge and we'll get to it. Here's a Bryant crank. You can see polish to this one's been rim polished so mirror finish extra light high dollar stuff right here shaped counterweights pretty nice this is a uh, <laughs> this is an expensive piece all right let me get my tools out get these main caps torqued and I'll get right back with you all right so, got our Mitotoyo outside mic set, two inches, uh, two, four, seven, seven. And just as a, uh, I guess, a flex of uh, experience on reading a mic. So, I'm going to look back at our notes from where I played with this block a couple of weeks ago. Two two four seven seven. So um, I got the exact same measurement that I did uh, the last time I, I measure, uh, messed with this block. So it's been several weeks. So that always makes you feel good that things are repeatable. But I'm gonna put this uh, in my mic stand. Then we'll get our board gauge out, set our board gauge to zero, and then check our bearing clearance. So we're getting two and a half thousandths on that front bearing. So I recorded that and I recorded that I used a half standard and a half X. So since we've got our main rear main cap uh, tightened, torqued, then we can check it as well. And as you would expect from a $5,000 crankshaft, the Front and rear are within just a few tenths of each other. And this is from where I measured it several weeks ago. So same dimensions. Since my bore gauge is already uh, set, then we can just walk this over. And check it. So we're getting about two seven there. So we're gonna leave that where it is. So now that we have front and rear done, I'm gonna go ahead and lay our bearings in. We're gonna go with a standard and a plus, uh, an X, X bearing, and uh, hopefully all of our bearing clearances will fall in line. Well, here's a good shot of all five main caps on the block, all torqued and ready to go. Unfortunately, these two guys right here were a half thou too big on the clearances, so um just a tolerance stack sometimes you get that and for some reason i only had i didn't have a full set of standard bearings so I had a full set of x bearings so that means i am off to order more parts and see if i can get these two guys dialed in um two and a half thousandths is about where i want to be three thousandths is just too too loose uh, for me for a, a two and a quarter um, main journal diameter so we'll dial that in we'll get it closer but um, let's see where are we on this project so we're waiting on the heads to be done 
The cam is a custom billet steel solid flat tappet. So low spring loads, but uh, really good longevity and no break in. Uh, pretty expensive, but it's a good way to go, uh, especially for a race motor like this. And I went that direction because of the tunnel port heads. Uh, you only have so much room in those tubes for push rods. And when you start using roller lifters and a lot of lift, um, a lot of duration, then things get kind of tight in there. So I really didn't want to be hacking up uh, a set of heads and moving tubes around, that sort of thing. So uh, this will net us a really good result. All right, guys, this is going to be it for this video. And um, uh, as always, I appreciate you hanging in with me. We'll get some more bearings. We'll get this dialed in. But um, hope you're having a good week. If you haven't uh, yet, hit subscribe so that you don't miss out on the rest of this build. We'll be trucking right along as soon as all the parts get in. We did hit our 10,000 subscribers. So we're actually up over 10,030 right now. So we're making small gains. All right, guys. Hope you're doing well. Talk to you soon.